Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, April 9th, 2021. I'm your host, Blessing, Adigoye Jr. Joining me is host of PS I Love You, XOXO, Greg Miller. Hi, Blessing. How are you? I'm doing good. What are the chances that me and you are going to unite on this Roper Report that is basically just PlayStation News? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's a takeover. This is a PS I Love You, XOXO takeover of Kind of Funny Games Daily. You're in our world now. I've had enough of this sour taste in my mouth having to talk about Xbox and Game Pass and the show and Bethesda. <laughs> Let's oh, instead duck. talk about some good PlayStation news that everything is fucked. Damn it. Oh, Shit. God. No, Fuck. no. Is, is that what the news is? God, oh, no. Well, at least... We'll have to talk about things like a Last of Us remake, No Days Gone 2, and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday. This news is terrible. Right here on <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. Depends on who you ask. I'm sure somebody out there wants a Last of Us remake. I've never seen I've never seen one person ask for a Last of Us remake. Uh, each and every day at 10 a.m. live right here on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games, we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong. We're going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Uh, yes, YouTube.com is kind of funny games. I've tried to start doing this whole uh, rigmarole off yeah. script so yeah. that I can like look at the camera. And sure. now like I'll say a thing and I'm like, is that what is that the right thing? YouTube.com is kind of funny games. Yes. You just got to power, power, power through it. Act like I, I said, said the worst wrong. is when you do it for a long time one way and then you start ad libbing a little bit in the middle and then it all just falls apart. And it all me. falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can also watch later on roosteeth.com or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily. To be a part of the show, to patreon.com slash kind of funny games or bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show. Housekeeping for you, Invincible episode five reactions are up right now on youtube.com slash kind of funny and surprise, I'm part of the cast now for the yeah. Invincible reactions. Yeah, I've been loving that Invincible. Got to talk about episode five and let me tell you, I had good things to say about it. What a show. What a good show. Do you show. want me to tell you how the season's going to end? No, please, God, no, please don't. Okay, okay. I made a pre- I made a pre- on on our reactions. You asked me like, what are your predictions for where the show goes? Yeah. And I made my predictions, and then right after the show, I was like, wait, no, I like I, everything. Everything changed in terms of like a new uh, uh, something I thought about that happened in the episode, and I was like, wait, no, if that happened, that must point to this. Uh, very exciting show for a uh, show to theorize about and think. Everybody about watch Invincible. In it's great. It's fantastic. Uh, another thing you should be watching, Falcon in the Winter Soldier. Our reactions for that are also going up today. You can catch both of those again on YouTube.com slash kind of funny. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Mick at the Nanobiologist, Tom Bach, Trent Berry, and Blackjack. Today we're brought to you by Honey and Fix Your Gaming, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Rope Report. It's time for some news. We have two stories today. Two uh, Baker's does two really, huh? So this yeah, is gonna be a seven-minute Roper report. You're telling me the show grand total thirty-seven minutes. We're in and out. Well, Greg, this morning Jason Schreier did what Jason Schreier does, and he <laughs> he, he whipped out his notepad and he busted out a fucking banger of a breakdown. Uh, this morning he put up an article. Uh, titled Sony's obsession with blockbusters is stirring unrest within the PlayStation Empire. Oh and out of, no. <laughs> out of this one report, there are like 19 different things. It's so like, many oh headlines that we can touch on. And it, th- this is this is one of the ones where it was really fun putting together the Roper report because I had no idea how I was going to tackle this one. I was sure. like, should I just do this as one news story? Should I like find different sources that like touch on the different parts of the news story? And I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to read read through Jason Schreier's report. I've condensed it a little bit, but so much of it is so necessary because it's so because it's so detailed. But I'm going to go through the report, and we're just going to talk about it as a whole and touch on what we want to t- touch on as we go. Does that sound good? Sounds great. That sounds great to me. Everybody, of course, go to Bloomberg, read the article there, support them, support Jason. I subscribe to Bloomberg because of reporting like this. Yes. Uh, and so again, this is an article from Jason Schreier at Bloomberg. And I guess the story number one on the Roper Report is basically just going to be what's going on at PlayStation Studios? Question mark. Question mark. All right. The new story goes like this: Sony's Visual Arts Service Group has been has long been the unsung hero of many hit PlayStation video games. The San Diego-based operation helps finish off games designed at other Sony-owned studios with animation, art, or other content and development. 
But about three years ago, a handful of influential figures within the visual arts service group decided they wanted to have more creative control and lead game direction rather than being supporting actors on popular titles such as Spider-Man and Uncharted. Michael Mumbar, who founded the Visual Arts Service Group in 2007, recruited a, a group of about 30 developers, internally and from neighboring game studios, to form a new development unit within Sony. The idea was to expand upon some of the, some of the company's most successful franchises, and the team began working on a remake of the 2013 hit The Last of Us for the PlayStation 5. Why? <laughs> Why would this be what you go do? Well, we're about to get the answer, but Sony never fully acknowledged the team's existence or gave them the funding and support needed to succeed in the highly competitive video game market, according to people involved. The studio never got its own name. Instead, Sony moved ownership of the Last of Us remake to its original creator, Naughty Dog. The team's failure highlights the complex hierarchy of video game development and, in particular, Sony's conservative approach to making games for the PlayStation 5. The Japanese conglomerate owns about a dozen studios across the world as part of its PlayStation Studios label, but in recent years, it has prioritized games made by its most successful developers. Studios such as Santa Monica, California-based Naughty Dog, and Amsterdam-based Guerrilla Games spend tens of millions of dollars to make games with the, ex with the expectation that the, that the investments will pay off exponentially. And they usually do. Hits including 2018's God of War and 2020's The Last of Us Part II are exclusive to PlayStation consoles, helping Sony sell some 114 million of the PS4. This fixation on teams that churn out hits is creating unrest across Sony's portfolio of game studios. Oregon-based Sony Bend, best known for the 2019 open-world action game Days Gone, tried unsuccessfully to pitch a sequel that year, according to people familiar with the proposal. Boo! Oh, Although Boo! The first... I like the core of Days Gone. I wanted to see a sequel. Boo! Apparently, they, apparently Sony Ben did too, but they didn't get. I it. think they would have trimmed a lot of fat off that game, and it would have been this would have been the banger that got everybody in personally. As somebody who did not love Days Gone, although the first game had been profitable, its development had been lengthy and critical reception was mixed. So, a Days Gone two wasn't seen as a viable option. Instead, one team at, at uh, one team at the studio was assigned to help Naughty Dog with a multiplayer game, while a second group was assigned to work on a new Uncharted game with supervision from Naughty Dog. Some staff, including top leads, were unhappy with this arrangement and left. Ben's developers feared they might be absorbed into Naughty Dog, and the studio's leadership asked to be taken off the Uncharted project. They got their wish last month and are now working on a new game of their own. Uh, now going back to the uh, San Diego studio that we started off talking about. If I can toss in this, and I know the word we, they talked about here, this is something we've talked about with Days Gone and uh, Ben, right? Of mm -hmm. John Garvin leaving, Jeff Ross leaving, and us being like, wait, that's weird. Those are the guys behind Days Gone with them yeah. going. Is, was it just a, hey, we've crossed the finish line and they've been with Ben forever. We just crossed the finish line or was it something more like this? And also want to point out, right? Like we've talked about this new untitled San Diego studio for a while, mm -hmm. right? And the, the rumors for us have been, are they working on a new Uncharted? Like we've had debates on what the studio might be working on. And so sure. going back there, uh, for their first solo project, Mumbar and his crew, uh, crew wanted to pitch something that would be well-received by their bosses at Sony. Recognizing the risk and expense involved with developing a new game from scratch, they decided to focus on remaking older games for the new PlayStation 5. Remakes are considered a safe bet since it's cheaper to update and polish an old game than it is to start from scratch. And they can be sold to both nostalgic fans, nostalgic old fans, and curious new ones. The team originally planned on a remake for the, the a remake of the first Uncharted game released by Naughty Dog in 2007. That idea quickly fizzled because it would be expensive and require too much added design work. Instead, the team settled on a remake of Naughty Dog's 2013 melancholic zombie hit, The Last of Us. At the time, Naughty Dog was in the thick of development on the sequel, The Last of Us Part II, which would introduce higher fidelity graphics and new gameplay features. If Mumbar's crew remade the first game to have a similar look and feel, the two games could be packaged together for the PlayStation 5. In theory, this would be a less expensive proposition than remaking Uncharted, since The Last of Us was more modern and wouldn't require too many gameplay overhauls. And I'm going to interject here and say, it sounds like it doesn't need a remake. <laughs> but moving on. I'll interject story. here. Kevin, I've been slacking assets. Thanks for you. Can you bring up the first tweet we have from the one, the only, the king of gifts? Corey Cudney. Corey Cudney puts it better than I think I ever could. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for Kevin to pull it up here. Uh, there's going to be another one I called for too, Kevin. That'll be in there. Not right away, but when you get there, it'll be there. Uh, right, but sorry, I'm looking slack's for been bad. Slack, slack's been bad. Give me two seconds. I got it. Okay. Right Stupid, right slack. Stupid slack. Stupid slack. You know? getting there. 
Uh, as you toss it up here, Corey Cudney tweets, The Last of Us came out eight years ago, got remastered seven years ago, got a PS4 Pro, uh, Pro upgrade five years ago, and another performance update cutting load times to a fraction six months ago. And that new studio is being used to completely remake it? And he uses the Hamilton gif of some of Lin-Manuel being all sad looking at somebody's phone off the screen. Like, what the fuck? Stop! Make new like, things! Make new things! The Last of Us might be the most accessible game that you can play right now. And you want to dated it. yes like when you, yeah. you when you play that game yes it feels like a ps3 game but like it is accessible it is there i do not like don't get me wrong they're gonna remake the last of us and i'm gonna play it and enjoy it of whatever course. but like come on sorry back then, to your story back to the story then Jason Schreier, once, bloomberg everybody send some love again give them a click again and, and there's also more like I, I did include most of the story but there is stuff there that i had to take out to to keep this down a bit but please go over there and read the full story because it is in-depth then once Mumbar's group had established itself, it could, it could go on to remake the first Uncharted game and other ti other titles down the road. So to catch up, they were like, okay, let's make let's remake the last of us so that we can prove ourselves. Yeah, prove so that we can yeah. then go back and remake Uncharted, which will in theory cost more money because it is an older game and take would take more work. Mumbar's project, codenamed T1X, was approved on a probationary basis, but Sony kept the team's existence a secret and refused to give them a budget to hire more people, leading many to wonder if the company was really committed to letting, them, letting the team build a new studio. Still, the small team kept working, and by the spring of 2019, they had completed a section of the game designed to showcase how the rest would look and feel. At that time, Sony was going through a management shuffle, and the new boss wasn't impressed. Herman Holst, the former head of Guerrilla Games, was named head of PlayStation's Worldwide Studios in November 2019. He thought the remake project was too expensive, according to people familiar with the matter, and asked why the planned budget for T1X was so much higher than remakes Sony had made in the past. The reason was this is one. Uh, this the reason was that this. This one was on a brand new graphical engine for the PlayStation 5. Mumbar needed to hire more people to help rework the graphics on new technology, as well as, as, well as redesign gameplay mechanics. Holst wasn't convinced, the people said. And then to, to there's more to the story, but to condense it down, this is how the series of events went, went right after that. Mumbar's team got called in to assist Naughty Dog when The Last of Us 2 fell behind. If you remember, The Last of Us 2 got delayed from November into fall of uh, November into, I should say, June of last year. That's when the team got called in to, to help out with that game. After The Last of Us Part 2, Sony and Naughty Dog as, uh, assisted with started to assist with the remake. Uh, it, inevitably, it inevitably became apparent that Naughty Dog was taking charge of the project. As the Jason e points out his story, right? They're bringing in Naughty Dog people who made The Last of Us. Yes. So when they're sitting in meetings, their opinion ki kind of starts to carry more weight than the people who are at this new studio, or you know what I mean, new branch out, incubated studio. Yeah. Of like, hey, here's what we think we like, should Like as do. Mumbar's team of, of 30 people, right? Like you have this vision, you want to make this remake, and then people from Naughty Dog start coming through. And then in those meetings, yeah, like the Naughty Dog, the people from Naughty Dog who worked on the original last of us their word starts to carry way more weight and it feels like the project is then shifting into their hands by the end of 2020 most of the team one t1x's team's top staff had left including mumbar uh the t1x project remains in development at naughty dog greg again there is so much to the story so much to break down is there any particular place that you want to start oof i mean I'll, uh, why are we remaking the last of us I'm not saying The Last of Us is a perfect game. I'm not saying The Last of Us holds up. Actually, you know what? Here's where we'll start. Kevin, I sent you a second link that is uh, from the one, the only, Paris Lilly of the Kind of Funny X-Cast. Uh, it's a Sean Layden clip I'd like to listen to together from an old uh, PlayStation press conference. So if you could pull that up and play that. There Here it is. Go. There it is. Give me some sound on that bad boy. Sound. Yeah, I, I also sad. saw this this morning, and at first I was like, "All right, Paris, Xbox fan, what you got?" For well, yeah, me? this, yeah, I'm sick of these Xbots coming in I'm here. Sick oh, of I, Paris get, I get the show. Xbox I get the show this year. I can have an opinion on PlayStation. Paris needs to sit down. Play and it from start. We'll be quiet now. We'll be quiet. That's right. Can you bring up the sound? That's as high as it goes. Really. personal favorite of mine that really embodies yeah they can't hear it at all in the chat so it's not even worth it then i guess uh so yeah it it's sorry, sean lee talking that's not the point right. all right kevin sorted it out everybody hold on Viv ribbon was unafraid to go against the tide it was courageous in its ambition and it brought a completely new experience to gamers it's an incredible time to be part of the playstation family 
I look forward to growing our gaming community through breakthrough experiences that inspire and delight. After all, guys, it's all about the games, isn't it? So the part I think that wasn't playing sound at the very front was him saying that well, Viv well, Ribbon, well, right, talking about that and how it wasn't a million seller, but that's yes. okay because it pushed things forward. And then the second part you hear, right, of him being like, that's what this is about is PlayStation is pushing things forward, new IPs, it's all about the games. And so to come back here then and see, again, a shift in strategy that it's interesting as you know people who cover this every day let alone ps i love you xoxo let alone my 14 years of covering playstation the news in general isn't shocking right we just saw sony japan or japan studios close down right and the reason being is like cool and a bloomberg actually had a report on that too cool we don't want games that are just japan focused we want them to be we want you to think of a worldwide blockbuster when you make your games and games uh, that sony or japan studios works on right uh like or sony japan uh like uh uh, uh you know gravity rush like patapon yeah. like loco roco like these aren't Astro games Bot. that are breaking out and going astrobot being the exception right because mm -hmm. team asobi is like what they've reformed that studio like around the, the one thing they've kept from that studio yeah. exactly and we, we had a long conversation about that and my take on it was like listen obviously that sucks but we are if you look back at their history recent history we're longing for the ps3 uh, japan studio right that was making crazy weird stuff and you really haven't seen that from them and the idea is that they can eliminate that because it's not profitable for them first party and third parties will continue to make those weird games independent studios will continue to make those weird kind of games and you'll still get it and that was what we already seen right that some of the people who left uh, japan studios had gone over and started their own thing already and we're already getting their uh, wheels moving on that and so yes it was the idea that sony would be their exclusives and their first party would be more focused on the blockbusters the big thing for me then to come back to here it's this idea of i think there's a world apart or a world of difference i guess i should say in ghost of tsushima and a last of us remake and that's what i have the problem with with this story right like i would rather it be that as even days gone right jason's article talks about the fact that it did well right but uh, you know, although the first game has been profitable its development had, had been lengthy and the critical reception was mixed I agree with all of that, obviously. That's, those are all facts, right? And the, uh, the audience that's behind Days Gone is huge. I would love to see Sony Ben get another shot at that. I would love to see them take in the feedback people gave them, people like me, and see what that second game would be like. And I think I would have to imagine development would be faster because of the fact they have the engine now. They know what they're doing. They learn so much from it. But all that out the window, like it's more the fact of, okay, cool, we're starting off this different studio, right, that uh, we're talking about throughout this entire article, right, uh, that uh, you know, Mumbauer was working at, uh, that used to be, you know, a part, or is part of Visual Art Services Group. Like I'd like to see them get to chase that new idea and do something different and this is what we were talking about right with this rumored san diego studio working on a uh, a new breathing new life into a playstation franchise we had all thought that it was going to be a new uncharted that they were making you know the uncharted that would follow chloe the uncharted that would follow what happens and the characters introduced at the uncharted uh, end of uncharted you can 4 say, nobody, i'm not spoiling it the, god damn it it's still nobody's, real right, nobody's sitting here right now being like oh i hope i don't hear somebody spoil it if i'm you about care to figure about, out what happened to sam and nate in this game if you care wait. about spoilers you, you've played uncharted by now I'm just saying, it's fine. But yeah. All right, fine, I'll say it. I've turned it off now if you don't hear it. Maybe they were going to do something with Nate and Elena's daughter, right? Like, I, that, yeah, that was the idea <laughs> that they would go do something new with that, right? Uh, the idea, even, like, so I guess, like, even, I guess remaking Uncharted 1, it still seems like a weird thing. Like, I, I don't want to see, I, I thought we were getting out of the remasters i thought we were getting out of the the re-releases and this isn't the same thing i know but stick with me I, I, let's go forward what do the people want to make i i would be personally more excited to hear hey the next chapter in the uncharted universe is this game we're introducing this new character his name is ted and ted let me tell you he's he is a weirdo and he's you know i whatever pitch me something new and tell me how you're pushing it forward and give me a new story rather than have to go back and be like all right cool we're doing nate and elena's story again which i love obviously and i would love to see like in a more modern take but like not to the point that I want to sacrifice that. So then even to throw that out and go, well, we'll start with The Last of Us. I'm like, oh, man. Like, I love Last of Us Part 1, and I love Last of Us Part 2. Playing Last of Us Part well, Actually, I would've, what did I do? I p played Last of Us Part 2, then I went through and played Last of Us Part 1, then I played Last of Us Part 2 again. Mm -hmm. And it's that idea of, like, trust me, I playing Last of Us Part 1 is, oh, man, yeah, I forget. This is a PS3 game. 
Like, sure. you know, we, we heap so much praise and love on it, deservedly so back then, and even now. But you get in there, and you're like, oh, wow, these environments are not as dense or as populated or as hard to navigate as you might think they are. And you play Last of Us Part Two, and I think it's a, you know, stellar game, master class, huge environments, all sorts of stuff to do. But again, like, I don't, I don't, pl- I didn't play Last of Us Part Two and go, man, I need to see Last of Us Part One in this engine. I need to see Last of Us Part One like this. No, like, let's do something new, let's do something different. Yeah, like last we just got Last of Us Part One, what eight years ago, which is a long time. But when we're talking about video game remakes, I don't last. We mentioned this earlier. Last of Us One is very playable. Last of Us One is still a fun game. It's aged in a lot of aspects, but it's still a game that is very much available for me on my PS Five. Like if I wanted to play it, right totally. through through getting the remastered version on the PS Four, and I believe it's probably part of PlayStation Plus collection. Like there, it is a it is a very playable game, and the the. Out of all your IP that that PlayStation has, probably the game that needs a remake the least, especially because we have, um, we have Last of Us Part Two. If you want to play the quote unquote modern modern version of that game, uh, for me, the one of the big takeaways I have from I, I get from this story is that it seems like Sony and PlayStation First Party just has an an obsession with Naughty Dog that goes way beyond like, hey, this is our best studio. It is, hey, we just gotta we we have to keep nurturing this studio's IPs because they're the, they're they're what we love right whether it is bringing in uh ben studio to work on a new uncharted or bringing in the the san diego team to work on a last of us remake for some reason the the focus on naughty dog specifically i find a bit worrisome because i love naughty dog games i think naughty dog puts out banger after banger like i understand the idea that we want to we want to nourish these games and continue to push them because they're some of our best games that we have but at the same time, like well, yesterday, you, you, you and Tim were talking a lot about Xbox Game Pass and the moves Xbox X, Xbox Xbox are doing, and does Sony kind of lose to that? And like, what like what what is Sony's response? What is the, the two w the two Sony? questions that have been on shows this week that I think are right here in the conversation of when is Sony get a big W? When does Sony get a big W to compete with some of the Microsoft Ws? Mm-hmm. And then also, should are people too worried? Are people too concerned about PlayStation in light of what's been happening with all the Xbox Show, uh, Game Pass, Bethesda, all that jazz that's been going yeah. on? And the thing, the thing I'd say to that is the moves that Xbox are doing on their side feels like they're very much changing and pushing the standard of yep. what all of this is. Where you look at Game Pass, then we've talked about this a billion times, but you look at Game Pass and how that's shifting the way that people approach buying games or getting access to games. You look at their group of studios and how that, that's diversified their por- portfolio and how we're going to see that see that come to fruition over the years when you start to get games from Bethesda and you start to get games from Double Fine and all their different studios firing on all, on all cylinders. And that starts to change when you see them do things like xCloud and, and, and have all these different initiative that, initiatives that not only bring a lot of life to their catalog, but then also push... Uh, uh, diversity of games on their catalog right now on the PlayStation side, it very much feels like we are going to get a like the, the Naughty Dog box <laughs> where it is. Hey, here's the next Naughty Dog game. Here's your Naughty Dog multiplayer game. Here's your un- new Uncharted from Ben Studio. Here's uh, the Last of Us remake from this other studio. And I think it's gonna it, it's gonna take way more than a bunch of Naughty Dog games and and like seven other banger franchises from your first uh, first party studios. To continue to stay to, to continue to, to stay, stay relevant top. and stay yeah. on top. Yeah. Like no, it you're is not going, wrong. Like, like you're, these... you're gonna be able to ride this out for this generation in terms of status quo and being PlayStation and, and maintaining your fan base, but the standard is being pushed in a way where that is not enough. Yeah. I think you know it's the here here's what I've I've learned, I guess, being a video game player slash working in the industry for so long. The company that plays to the gamer is the company that wins the generation. I truly believe that. And mm-hmm. if we look back and go, right, if you want to go to PlayStation 4, of course, it's infamous how they started that generation. They knew they infamous. needed to come out swinging. Yeah. Yeah. They needed to come out swinging, how to share a game. You know, we're, we're no longer the cell processor. We want this to be here. And they talked about games. They showed independent games. They made it all about games, about games, about games. And people flocked that message. You go back a generation from there, the Xbox 360, PS3, right? Xbox 360 was like, we are going to be online. You are going to have this ecosystem. We are going to do this. PlayStation was, you're going to get a second job because the system's going to be so cool and that did not resonate in the message and yes over the years playstation 3 caught up and surpassed xbox but i'm talking about in terms of hearts minds campaigns stuff like that ps2 had a dvd player right and was in there and was able to be more than just a video game console in a way the gamecube wasn't really going for and the xbox entered that race and you're going to lose your first year no matter what you get here and 
we are talking about like in the chat which has been popping off and everybody's doing great today uh super shotgun tweeted the last of us remake would sell 10 million copies at 70 dollars at 70 dollars dot 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 end of story and that's what we're talking about Sony is continuing, to, and I shouldn't say continuing, because the, the other conversation about the end of PS4 into PS5 is, is PlayStation going back to the hubris of the PS3 era where they started? Are they going back to being the siloed, quiet, corporate you know, entity out there? And you look at stuff like this, and back to Super Shotgun, it's going to sell 10 million copies at $70, end of story. Exactly, right? Like, this is a business decision. And that, that's what Jason's article is talking about as well, right? Of course, that this is being driven by how much money can we make on these things? And what do we go? And, uh, you know, we don't, we're we risk averse at the business terms, right? We don't want to go out there and have egg on our face. And we don't want to have a game that doesn't sell a million copies like Sean Layden, like we talked about in that video, right? Like uh, somebody put it in, uh, you are wrong here, as uh, Mrs. Old Sony says, so speaking of Sean Layden, there's a link to a Push Square article. And it reads, uh, PlayStation fans are missing Sean Sean Layden, and he's liking all the tweets. <laughs> this is Sammy Barker yeah. that went live today, right? Sean Layden was for a little while the public face of PlayStations, and fans grew to love him. The executive, who had a long history at, so uh, at Sony taking him from Europe to Japan, became a household name when he replaced Jack Trenton at as the boss of Sony Computer Entertainment America. In response to the Bloomberg report today, uh, they're talking about the video being shared everywhere else. That's touched a nerve among enthusiasts. Many are expressing that they miss the executive on social media. It turns out that Layden, presumably with pl plenty, plenty of free time gardening on his gardening leave, is reading all the comments and liking everything he sees. The overarching sentiment is, from many of the posts is that current boss Jim Ryan is bad and the old boss Sean Layden was goat. Uh, yeah, like that's what we're talking about, right? Of like it's such a different PlayStation than it was. And you sit here and I understand the financials of yes, the last of us being remade, especially like we're sitting here like, why would they do this? Blah, blah, blah. Think about this. If they're even in, on the slight same timeline it, to hit right before or right after or right during that HBO show, think about the new, the number of people that are going to learn about The Last of Us, see the thing, and then find out, wait, the original game's been remade and is in blistering 8K, 60 frames a second on my PlayStation 5. I should get a PlayStation 5, and I should get that remake. Like, I, I, this is, like, textbook what you'd want. I'm sure, in a lot of ways, the uh, CD Projekt Red wish they had been able to do with The Witcher 3, right? Where you remember Witcher 3 was more popular than ever when the Netflix Witcher show hit. People flocked back to that game. It was putting up huge numbers on Steam and every, or GOG or wherever the hell it was. People were playing it, is what I'm saying. And you could definitely see the tea leaves of, you're going to bring in a whole bunch of new people that really fucking care about The Last of Us. How do we get them to buy PlayStation 5s? And them being able to pick up the, you know, uh, Last of Us Part 2 isn't a great sell. Be able to pick up both of them in one copy, as Jason's article talks about at one point. The fact that, you know, put them both together in one package, that definitely works. And that's probably definitely what it is. And it's a definitely good business decision. And so the problem with all of this is trying not to sound like we're making a mountain out of a molehill. Because you have this one situation here with... Uh, visual art service group, Vaz, uh, Vazge, and, and, and Mumbauer, right? And w are we going too far in trying to extrapolate this to everything? I would argue no, based on what you're seeing, not only from this article, from the other Bloomberg article about uh, Japan Studios, right? Where you oh, had yeah. Japan Studio be, be folded. You're talking about, oh man, Days Gone, and they got they couldn't get Days Gone too, and maybe there's becoming they're, they're going to bend the knee to Naughty Dog, and you see people like Garvin and Jeff Ross leave, right? And keep in mind that this is a studio that they were working at, or at least. John Garvin was. I shouldn't speak out of turn on Jeff Ross. I forget how long Jeff had been there. If somebody wants to, you're wrong me. Uh, John Garvin had definitely been there during um, Uncharted Golden Abyss, where they had to do that again. And I, w would you willingly step back into that lines then? Like when people talk about Uncharted games, they do not talk about oh, Golden Abyss and Vita. And if you have the gall to bring it up, because it was a good game, the gall to bring it up, right? Oh, it's not a real Uncharted game. Like, yeah, that one I'm sure count. they all have PTSD about that. So if it is, hey, Ben, we, we, we have something here. We have this cool world we're doing, a lot of cool mechanics with Days Gone. The audience is connecting with it. It's selling well enough. Let us do a second one. 
no, we'd rather you do some more stuff and help out here on this Uncharted project. And like, I'm sure that's why you saw Gar. I shouldn't say I'm sure. I would imagine that's why you saw, among other things, in time and yada yada yada. These leads hit the button and eject out. And it's interesting to see here is that pivoted back to being more of like, no, no, we really want you to do this. They were able to push back and get lo loose on it, right? Do we have that part in the story? I'd like to quote it, but I don't remember if we're actually there yet. Where they were saying like, okay, cool, they were able to negotiate to getting off of it, right? That I didn't see that as part of the story, no. Cool. We'll keep on going. I'll, I'll find it for you. But yeah, like, I mean, I, I think the, por the point about Last of Us Remake selling, what well, would end up selling 10 million units is apt. I think my argument, my argument to go along with that would be how much would Dream sell if you, if you put more marketing around it and you try to push it harder? Like in, the, in the Bloomberg story here, they have uh, Jason Try included, in included a paragraph here that mentions emphasizing big hits can also be counterproductive because sometimes games that start small can turn into massive successes. In 2020, Sony didn't put much marketing muscle behind the quirky video game creation mm -hmm. system Dreams by the PlayStation-owned Media Molecule uh, in the UK. As a result, PlayStation may have missed out on its own version of Roblox, a similar video game tool. Parent company Roblox Corp went on went public earlier this year and is now valued at forty five billion dollars, and that kind of comes back to to my takeaway of the story, which is again like I understand the why, I understand the pure raw business of it when it comes down to Naughty Dog produces hits, Naughty Dog games have sold for us. Let's double down on Uncharted and let's double down on The Last of Us and let's double down on these things that we know are going to be successful, even though we know that. Ben Studio would prefer to work on Days Gone 2, even though we know that certain studios would prefer to work on their own original projects, those aren't worth it to us because of pure raw business. And for me, that I from the pure raw business side, I and I get it. But on the I want to see the video game, I want to see the video games industry continue to be to flourish and be diverse and continue to have really cool ideas. And I want to see Sony Sony first party, especially, continue to have cool ideas and work on cool projects and work on stuff that the developers are passionate about. It seems like that's not the case. And it seems like what we're going to get are the pure it, what we're going to get is the pure raw business of it which i know fi people are going to be fine with but me personally i look at that and i'm like ah that's boring like that goes back to the conversation we had last year about sony and do they take enough risks and and yada yada which we kind of came down on in terms of yeah like the, the you're going to get a lot of the same types of games but also their hits and so and again, like, man, there's so much to talk about. I want to jump off of number one. I was in here is we've just, we have so much to talk about, right? It was, I was correct about the Ben thing, right? Where it was after they're already talking about people had left days gone to be canceled. Then it's the, instead one team was uh, in the studio to help Naughty Dog with multiplayer. One was supervision from Naughty Dog. Some staff, including top leads were unhappy with the arrangement and left. Ben's developers feared they might be absorbed into Naughty Dog and the studio's leadership was asked to be taken off the Uncharted project. They got their wish last month and are now working on a new game of their own, which you assume isn't days gone to um then to your point that's you just made about uh the risks and no they all just make you know very similar games like that i think goes back to what you were saying earlier of a naughty making your playstation a naughty dog box where i don't even think it goes as far as making your playstation a game a box where the games are just published by naughty dog it I mean, you look at what hits for PlayStation, right? And you're seeing the influence of Naughty Dog. You're seeing the move to becoming the AAA blockbuster storytelling franchise, right? And I think mm -hmm. you obviously have everything you see with Last of Us and, and Uncharted, right? But then that goes to uh, uh, God of War. That goes to Ghost of Tsushima. I think the game, I think those games are direct results of oh man we can do really cool different things we can make these giant cinematic things and push themes and do different things and like Corey being able to come in and be like well i want to tell this version of the kratos story and i want it to be handheld and i want it to be one shot and i want it to go the whole way like that is such a departure from uh what god of war was and i think a huge part of that is being able to see the success of cinematic games like uncharted like last of us and see that where that goes mm -hmm. and push it out that way and then, but I, you want to jump on that because I have one other thing I want to bring up to you. No, keep going because I was going to bring in a question. Do you buy? I love Jason. This is amazing reporting. Mm -hmm. I, fucking great job, everything else. And Jason's coming on Games Daily, I think, in May. Uh, do you buy this paragraph about dreams? Well, like, he's like, he's like, <laughs> oh, I mean, in 2020, I, I, Sony didn't do much marketing and muscle behind the quirky video game creation system Dreams by the PlayStation owned Media Molecule. As a result, PlayStation may have missed out on its own version of Roblox, a, a similar video game tool. Parent company Roblox Incorporated or Corporation was public the, earlier this year and valued at forty-five billion dollars. I'm like, I buy the idea of it. Like, I don't think Dream, I don't think Dreams was ever going to go on to become Roblox. Like Roblox, is, I think it's just an anomaly of its own. But I think there is something there in terms of what if, at, what if as PlayStation, you treated dreams right from the get go? 
yeah. right? What if you what if you marketed it with this with and I'm not even saying with the same marketing that you give Last of Us because I I understand that hey, it's Last of Us, it's Dreams. Like you're not going to give it the same marketing yeah. push as you as you give the other. But what if you what what if you went harder, right? What if you put it in front of more faces? What if you included it with the PlayStation Five as a free yep. download? What if you treated it like YouTube, where anybody can play Dreams, but if you want to create Dreams, you have to pay. Twenty dollars or thirty dollars to get into it. I think there's so there are so many things you could do with dreams or to get that game into more hands and treat it better that it could blow up and become the uh, a staple on the PlayStation platform. Because I uh, I'm working on my my the blessing show episode about dreams that's going to come out next oh. week Thursday for people to check out and it's it's all about dreams. I I've been playing a lot of dreams within the last couple of months just to like take a look and see what's going on and see if the dreams have been getting better. And one of the things that over the years where we got early access a couple years ago in 2019 and the dreams full release in 2020. One of my takeaways in 2019 from playing early access dreams was that, okay, these early things are a lot of work in progress. These early things are a lot of like remakes of certain levels of certain games. It's a lot of stuff that feels like it needs time to grow and develop. And if you come back, if you going back to dreams a year later at release, you know, I think you started to see some of the, some of that stuff come to fruition. You started to see dreams develop and get a bit better. And within the last few months of me going back into dreams, it feels like a lot of that stuff is now even getting better and better in a way where I'm like, mm. fuck man, like people are doing really cool things in this thing. And a year from now, even like I'm super excited to go back and see even cooler creations. And with that being the case, I'm like, dude, if PlayStation, I, I think if PlayStation put way more effort in the marketing aspect of dreams and actually getting into people's hands, then yeah, I, I think dreams had blowing up potential. Like, I, and I think it still has it. Honestly, like, I don't think that. I don't think that's. Well, I mean, that's the big yet. thing too. You know, I saw the chat call of that Roblox is like ten years old too. So it's not like it's, it's little apples and oranges and stuff. And I think for also, sure. you know, and people want to like dunk on Jason. I, you know, that's not what I was going for. I think it's also that it, it, Jason has that line to walk where he's writing about intense video game stuff we care about, but then also trying to report it to Bloomberg's audience that does not know what we how doesn't know what the fuck dreams is, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that the paragraph can be blown out of proportion in terms of like, what are you talking about? And that's what I'm going for as much as I'm talking about. Like, I understand the idea of why he's putting it in there and do it. Cause he's trying to show the audience that doesn't know video games that they also had this, they did make this weird quirky out of the ordinary game, but they didn't do anything with it, which is weird. Exactly. I, I, yeah. Uh, we have a lot of questions about this new story and I'm going to go through some of them. I'm going to pull in a question from Greg, not you, Greg, Greg from Edmonton who writes and uh, says, okay. Good morning, Greg and Tim. I am not Tim. I am Blessing. Damn. Good morning, Greg and Tim. I'm a huge fan of Sony's game direction during the PS4 era, making blockbusters and also trying new ideas. This new report makes me worried. Days Gone may not have been a critical darling, but I sure as hell enjoyed my time enough, to, uh, enough in the game to even platinum it. I was really looking forward to a sequel, as I'm sure many others were too. Is Sony at risk of stagnating if this direction, if this is the direction they are taking, just focusing on studios making blockbusters? We've already seen some heads leave studios because they couldn't work on something they wanted to work on. Keep up the great work you do. Thank you for always making the, my long drives for work entertaining. Greg from, Ed, from Edmonton. Greg, thank you for listening. Uh, Greg Miller, do you think Sony is at risk of stagnating with what we've gotten from this Bloomberg story? It's always tough, right? Because you go, yes. I mean, it would be, of course, there's always a risk of stagnation. The idea would be, again, where I don't, I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill, is that they're not saying every first party remake an old game, right? Do whatever. They're saying, all right, cool. At the time, this other thing now, uh, Naughty Dog, which is sh huge, and I'm sure working on multiple things, including factions, you know, remake The Last of Us again, because you have an amazing engine with Last of Us Part Two, and we're going to have this Last of Us TV show. Let's sell some fucking units and sell some things. Stagnation, I, I, I think. I don't see Sucker Punch not working on Ghost of Tsushima 2, right? I see them or, or in working on a remaking Infamous. I don't see that's what's happening. I think this is a very specific case. I think it is then trying to follow up on the successes, and then you have to start wondering, and it, it's what PlayStation, again, as we talk about them being you know, the, the bean counters, right? Worrying about the business and the financials of it. Do they need to worry about it? You know, Xbox making these pro gamer decisions and bringing people in on Game Pass and buying up studios to make smaller games, buying up things to make, you know, it, it, they make other things, but to make grounded, right? To make these uh, little experiences that aren't ever going to get the audience of A Last of Us Part Two. But when you combine the audiences playing all these different mini experiences, are they bigger than The Last of Us Part Two's audience? And then 
where do the financials net out of you have all these crazy little experiences, these quirky little games. And I shouldn't say little, but you have these double A games in a way PlayStation doesn't have. Mm -hmm. Is that enough to draw people to your platform to buy your console, to stick around and make it their primary console? That's the thing here. Cause PlayStation saying, cool, you know, Mumbauer leaves, you know, Garvin leaves, all these people leave. They're leaving their studios. They're Sony owned and operated studios. And I'm not, I'm talking out my ass here, by the way. I'm not sure where these people have gone, but they're probably not leaving the industry. They're probably leaving to go to other developers. They're probably going to start their own independent studios. They're probably going to go make games. And chances are those games will end up on PlayStation. So it's not so much you're starving the PlayStation audience of opportunities. I doubt any people are leaving here with such an ax to grind that they're then looking at me like, and fuck you, PlayStation, we'll, we won't put it on there. Maybe they're saying fuck you, PlayStation, because Xbox Game Pass is driving up and giving them a bunch of money and doing this whole thing. But then we're into the same conversation of what are people buying the boxes for? What are they getting out of them? And when does the win change enough? It's what we talked about on PS I Love You this week, you and me, right? Of like, mm -hmm. your friend asks you what console they should buy right now. That's a tough conversation not tough i guess it's there it is a lot of this or that or this, like what what do you want to play how much money do you want to invest are you looking for a if i tell you about all these playstation first party games that are coming or already out are you into that or do you want the netflix subscription model of game pass that has a whole bunch of great games on it from all sorts of different developers and then it's adding new stuff all the time and what what about that like when Xbox finally comes out and drops the hammer and is like, here is what our slate is. Here's what people are look, looking at for the next two years. It's going to be very interesting. I just want to let you know, you're a professional because I can hear those kids outside of your window having a blast. Uh, yeah. And the fact that I you're just you. like, keep going, keep moving on. I'm like, dude, that's that's. As everybody right knows, there. I'm Greg Miller and I'm a, a consummate professional. Are they like super distracting for you? Like, no, they, like, no, not at all. No, no, I don't even hear. I don't think they are. Right, Kevin? Like, you did you ever notice the kids? I I didn't notice it until I, I heard like a little bit of screeching and I was like, what, what's going on? Oh, it's the outside the window. You got kids playing around. It's I don't the, think it's a scratch. I want you to know as a consummate professional, I don't hear them. And I have never been more challenged in my life for if I was going to call in sick for a show than on Wednesday where I, you know, I had a real quick moment. Uh, I ran Porty downstairs. He goes in the backyard where they play and he was walking around doing his business and the kids ran up to me and they were saying hi and they were talking about 40 and me and then one of them turned and he said all right we got to get back to work on the proton packs i'm gonna leave soon and these two kids ran over and they went back to work on their cardboard proton packs and i really if it hadn't been jerry o'connell i probably would have been like you know what nick i'm sick and i would have suited up come go. down there and made proton packs <laughs> with these kids that's awesome that's a great story also, that is an yeah, amazing you could barely hear him Cool. Okay, so there you go. It's not a distraction at all. Uh, but I will distract us from this episode for a second because I want to tell you about our sponsor. Of course, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where you can get the show ad-free. And speaking of ads, this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by Honey. We all shop online, and we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Kind of Funny loves Honey. Tim Geddes himself has used it for years and has saved thousands of dollars. He says himself, you are silly if you don't use it. It is free and easy. And I've also been listening to the show throughout the week. And every time this comes up, Greg Miller also mentions that he uses Honey. He loves it. Uh, isn't that right, Greg? I can't hear. Oh, he's gone. He's he like here. He, he, he left. We actually all use it. Yeah, I use it too. Tim uses it. It's so easy to install. One click and there it is. A little coiny. One Just click and there it is. Honey has found its over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in just a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. I'd never recommend something we don't use. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash games. That's joinhoney.com slash games. We're also brought to you by Fixture Gaming. We want to talk to you about a special kind of funny best friend today. Have you ever used your Nintendo Switch for a long, long time, and afterwards, your wrists and your shoulders were sore? Turns out, the Nintendo Switch isn't the most ergonomic. Sometimes, you just want to use a Pro Controller and still play on the go. Our friend Austin Stark had an idea to fix that, 
the fixture S1. We met Austin a while back at a San Francisco meet and greet, and he showed us the fixture S1 known as the Switch Fix at the time, and we were blown away by how comfortable and sturdy it was. Since then, we use the fixture S1 pretty regularly. You just slide in the Nintendo Switch, attach your Pro Controller, and now you can take your Switch and Pro Controller with you anywhere. You can also use it as a stand for the Switch. The fixture S1 comes in two colors, gray and red slash blue. It has completely changed the way we play on our Nintendo Switches, and we're thrilled to announce that the fixture S1 is on sale this week for 20% off on the Fixture Gaming website. If you want to check it out, please go to fixture, fixturegaming.com. Thanks again to Austin and the Fixture Gaming team for sponsoring this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily. Greg, we're not done with story number one yet. Like Hell I said, no, we, we aren't. We only have two stories today, and the second one is not a big one, so we can hang out here for uh, for a little bit more. And Let's we will get in because here. we have like a lot ticks. more questions. Uh, I'm going to bring in a question from Bander SN, who writes in and basically asks, "Is this all normal?" Bander SN writes in with this. Hey, Greg and Blessing. Sound the alarms, alert the troops, unfreeze Kaz Harai because PlayStation is doomed. I'm sure, you're already deep, I'm sure you're already deep in a discussion on Jason Schreier's new article regarding Sony not giving studios creative freedom, but something about the article doesn't add up. The reported Last of Us remake seems to have been made by a small support studio and approved by, Sh- by the Sean Layden era of PlayStation before being moved under Naughty Dog. Is it a bad thing to move the, games, the game to leadership of the, the original developer? As far as Sony Ben goes, the article states that Days Gone 2 wasn't greenlit and that Ben that Bend is helping with Naughty Dog's multiplayer game and a new Uncharted. Some leaders left and the remaining leadership pitched something new, so Sony said yes. What is this article actually trying to say? Is PlayStation actually stifling creativity and independence or is this perfectly normal games industry movement? Very excited for next week's PS I love you and thanks for taking my question. Greg, how much of this do you just consider m- normal? I consider it uh, the majority. I think the whole thing is normal. This isn't that PlayStation's doomed. This isn't that this is the end of the world. It's just a shift. It's the latest evidence of a shift at PlayStation. We've had it before. We've had these little stories. We've talked about this stuff. We've seen people leave. We've seen Japan studio go away. Like we've had these things and this is just the most comprehensive report of what is going on there and what's and what you're seeing. I think that, Obviously, Herman coming in and being able to say, why are we doing this? Why are we spending this much money? You know, Sean leaving and project shifting, like, that is all natural. That is business. That is, you know, running a game company. Not that I know, because I never have. It's just the idea that as we, we always talk about how slow a ship like Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo is to turn, right? You, you, and so, like, I feel like when you see the little move, when the moves they don't see, or when, you, when you're turning, they're little moves you don't see them. When you get to see it all laid out here and have, you know, someone sound the klaxons that this is what's going on, there's more of an actual conversation for it. You know, again, when we're talking about this whole thing and people going on, someone in the chat, and it's long gone now because the chat's so active, was talking about the fact of like, of course they're doubling down on AAA blockbusters, right? They sold more than 114 million PlayStation 4s. Yeah, you, you dance with the one that brought you. And that's, 100 percent correct that is the business move right like none of this is shocking because playstation wants to continue to dominate the way they dominated the last generation and they see this being that way it's just the fact that as we see xbox continue to make these moves that are antithetical to what it seems to be playstation's uh, system is on all this right the fact that if you want to know about xbox you know you can look at phil spencer's twitter and he's gonna be talking about it and he's gonna be open about it you want to see like you know more acquisitions you see uh, them bringing people in every day we talk about this you know yesterday's story was about are they about to get kojima is that about to have a game there and stuff like that uh, you talk about game packs you talk about this the services the cloud all the stuff they're using whereas playstation The argument for it is the games. And so when you get here and you're like, the next big game you're going to get is going to be an old game made new again. That's exciting for some. It's exciting for us. Like, I love The Last of Us. I'll play it again. I hope it's a better trophy list. But, like, I still wish it was a brand new game. I wish it was a brand new franchise. I wish I was seeing something that is creative on the level of a concrete genie, something I love. And I can't believe, you know, Pixel Opus was able to put out with how we're talking about what PlayStation is. And we talk about dreams, right? And how long that gestated. Would dreams happen right now? Like, would if, if they pitch dreams right now, would dreams get optioned by PlayStation? And I'm saying right now, no knowledge of how long dreams took how weird the rollout was not weird yeah, yeah. but you know not i'm sure not ideal for what they wanted that rollout to be like 
would that have a chance? Like, what is media? This is where we go back to it of like, what is a media molecule future future in the PlayStation? Yeah, like what's, first what's party? the what is their next project that they work on after Dreams? Is it something more traditional, or do, are they, do they still get to be quirky media molecule? On the topic yeah. of of the Last of Us remake, I want to bring in this question from Rita, who says, "Hey, yeah. KFG crew, a couple months ago, I wrote I wrote in to ask if KF was interested in more Last of Us. With Jason's article, it seems." almost confirmed that we are getting more dramatic pause of the same. Do you think a remake of The Last of Us has something to offer? Visual enhancements could be could really push a remade Last of Us uh, push a, re- a remade Last of Us narrative to new heights in cutscenes. However, I struggle to see how a game designed in 2013 can reach the same gameplay heights as the 2020's The Last of Us 2. Even if The Last of Us remake is in the same engine as The Last of Us 2, I worry the overall game design holds The Last of Us back. What do you think? I am more. I am. I am happy for more. Just wanted to discuss the topic, in terms of coming off of the previous question of like predictability. Or, um, uh, is this normal? Right. I think the the issue I have with it, with this is, it's almost too predictable. Like reading mm. through the story, there was nothing that jumped out at me of, of like how could they or like this is this is not what I expected. All of it pretty much goes in line with wow those kids are really having fun out there all this goes (laughs) all this goes in line with exactly how i think both of us have thought about sony over the last year or so right where we have been getting the shift to more of the standard third person action narrative based game and especially with especially with how popular and how much the the last of us means to both fans and both sony as as a company seeing them work on the last of us remake doesn't make me go like why would they ever come like how do they come down on this decision for me it's more so of a wow like i can't believe they actually like it, it seems like they're actually going to go down this road of remaking like it, it it's almost par- it's almost parody like where it's like why would you ma- remake the last of us but at the same time you understand why they're remaking totally the last and of that's us. the weird thing about it right where it's like really and like then you're like the last of us isn't that old and then you look at the number you're like oh my god the last of us is pretty old i guess yeah, but it, it's just it feels so in our uh, current mindset because of Last of Us Part 2, because of the PlayStation Plus collection, because of Remastered, because of the patch. Be- I think it runs at 60 frames now if you want. Like, there's so many different things going on with that game that they keep updating. But yeah, I think it's, you know, uh, Bander saying, or no, which question were we on? Sorry. Oh, uh, Rita. Rita uh, was Rita, saying, yeah. hey, like, you know, it, will it have something new to offer? Yes, I definitely think it would. And that's what gets interesting about it. Now, remember, we're not saying remaster, which has already happened. We're saying remake. So I do think it would be taking the story and narrative you know and keeping all that but i would say gameplay is way more like last of us part two i would see it be more based around big old open areas lots of people to go out there and attack you know uh the more brutal kill i guess you more brutal but brutal kills uh i I think you're gonna get a it i think you'd play that it would be way more akin to last of us part two than last of us part one and i think that's where the excitement comes of like what they would do with that and that that freedom yeah and like I, I'd be down for it. That does sound like a fun time. But at the same time, I'm like I, I would, I don't. I feel I don't feel like I need it. You know, and I, I think yeah. that's the big thing for me. And that's a great way of putting it. I think yeah, where it's like oh yeah, sure, I'll play that. Like I'm yeah, yeah. okay, cool. But like I'm not like, oh like holy shit, yes, that's what I need. That's what I want right now. Like no, I, I'd rather see you know God of War Ragnarok. I'd rather see the stories progress than go backwards. Uh, I got Honestly, one more and I know that I'm, and I, and I know. I think I'd honestly be more excited. I, I, this is a weird, I guess. I think I'd be more excited for Uncharted. Uh, like if they remade Uncharted 1, I'd be, oh, more, yeah. I'd be more excited for that. But I don't know if I'd want to play it more than I want to play Last of Us Part 1. I don't know. That, I, don't have, I haven't wrapped my head around that. I mean, you, that's if, that, I, mean I think that it makes more sense though, right? Like Uncharted 1, like even the, one, 1 through 3, but 1 especially I feel like doesn't hold up as well as something sure. like The Last of Us. Like 1 very much felt like they were at, they were at the beginning of, of, of the idea of Uncharted, right? Like they, they, had, they had just come down to what that game was going to be. And when you go back and play Uncharted 1, it doesn't play as smoothly as... as two three and especially four in uh, yeah, uh, course, lost legacy and so if you're, if you're gonna tell me that you're gonna take that game and remake it in the style of uncharted 4 i would be ecstatic i would i i'm totally down with that last of us one though is just one that it's like it's been it's so recent and i can go back to that game and still be like this game looks really good still and plays yeah. pretty well still and i don't the, that game isn't broken enough or do, do, it doesn't provide enough that i think needs to be fixed 
for but we're to back to the conversation right from the chat here it's just about it's all about the benjamins as they say yeah. right where it's like yeah if you put out an uncharted thing you're trying to time it with the movie that'll be out well before this and is the movie even going to be good and yada 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 like last of us you see as an hbo ongoing series right it's going to be the season and then multiple you'd assume of it why not get all these people who are going to be there to look at this beautiful game to look at i should buy this console to get all on board with everything I got one more question, but I'm going to save the question for the post show. And so we'll look to the post show that's continuing talking about The Last of Us. Uh, but that was story number one of the Roper Report. Let's get into story number two. Sony might have an Xbox Game Pass counterpunch. This is Gabe Gurin at GameSpot. Xbox Game Pass doesn't really have a, com a comparable service on PlayStation systems. With the streaming service, PlayStation now not offering same-day launch for Sony's games or the same selection from other companies. According to the original God of War director, however, that could be changing in some fashion. In a YouTube stream on April 8th, spotted by VGC, God of War and Twisted Metal developer David Jaffe said staff at Sony had let him know about a counterpunch to Xbox Game Pass. He admitted he didn't know what form that would take, nor does it sound like he knows when there will be an announcement. Greg, do you believe it? Do you think there, do you think there's going to be a counterpunch to Xbox Game Pass from Sony that's imminent? Yeah, I mean, it's such a broad term that David's using on his stream here, right? Where it's mm -hmm. like, what is the, I don't think you're going to see a new service, a new thing, a new whatever. If anything, I think it's going to be that one day they'll combine PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now, right? And then actually drive you to use them and understand why PlayStation Now is great and what you should be doing with it. And maybe it's a bunch of games getting added to it. But I, I if, if, if I was talking to, if I was talking to, Sony PR or somebody over there, and they were like, "By the way, off the record, we're gonna have a counterpunch to Xbox Game Pass." I'd be like, "Oh, that's great," and then I hang up. Be like, "All right, let's see what the hell this is gonna be." Yeah, like I wouldn't be like, "Oh yeah, here we go, we got it now." Blah blah blah. Yeah, uh, that's one that we'll have to wait and see on Greg because that one is probably so far away. If it does happen, if I wanted to know what's coming out to Mom and Drop Shops today, where would I look? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kinda Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. Out today, we got Luxlinger for Switch and PC. Say No More for Switch, PC, and Mac. Tower of Waifus for PC, mm -hmm, The Legend mm -hmm. of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 4 for PC, Scars of Summer for PC, Yoko and Yuki, Dr. Rat's Revenge for Switch, Skyland Heart of the Mountain for Switch, Raven Sword, Shadowlands for Switch, that's a video game ass name, Gravity <laughs> Heroes for Switch, Raven Sword, Shadowlands. Shadow. Tori 3D for Switch, and then the House in Feta Morgana Dreams of the Revenants Edition for Switch. Got one new date for you. Neo, The World Ends With You is coming to Switch and PlayStation 4 on July 27th, and then also to PC sometime this summer. Of course, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where you can not only write into the show, but you can get the show ad-free, and you can write in with your squad ups, just like Stephen Sven McHale did. Uh, Stephen wrote, wrote in with the squad up on Twitch and says, Today is my son Ethan's 15th birthday, and while I can't be there in person to celebrate with him, I would appreciate the community helping him out, or helping me out. He recently started streaming on Twitch and a few more followers giving him giving him age appropriate sweet nasty love with streams would be great. As for the time, he is not able to stream today, but please join me next time he's able to. Thank you, best friends. If you want to show Steven's son, uh, Steven's son Ethan, uh, some love for his 15th birthday on Twitch, you can follow him twitch.tv slash cabbage532. That is cabbage532 cabbage five, three, two five, three, two. on Twitch. Uh, of course, people go over to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where they write in, let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong, so we can correct it for those watching later on YouTube and listening later on podcast services. Oh, let's see here. I guess we have breaking news that I'm going to double check real quick. It's not like big breaking news, and so don't get too excited. Don't get hyped. Oh, but this might be big breaking news for me. Holy cow. Uh, it's not a good source. I've never seen this person in my life. No, I'm not going to source this. I'm not going to source this. Uh, basically, somebody's out there talking about a possible Sonic Colors revival type thing, um, which is big for me. But take that with a grain of salt because the source didn't look that reliable. And so there you go. Did you see the thing uh, Slack? What was that? What was that? Nothing, Kevin? nothing. Check Slack afterwards. Check Slack. Oh, I see. I see. I see. No, that's the same source. This person has like like 300 followers. I don't, I've not heard of this person before. 
Reuter, I got a Reuters breaking news for you. Want that? Oh, yeah, hit me with it. Uh, it. Something happened here. I can't see who sent it anymore. Well, whatever. Uh, somebody sent in your wrong breaking news from Reuters here. Uh, Gamey Weakness puts Ubisoft on mergers and acquisition last life. This is Christopher Thompson uh, and Oliver Taslik. Uh In Ubisoft Entertainment's Assassin's Creed, players patiently stalk targets before stepping in for the kill. A similar fate may befall uh, founder Yves Guillemot's Gallic video game publisher unless he turns it around soon. Stuck-at-home players mean gaming companies have have generally had a good pandemic, less so Ubisoft. Shares in the Prince of Persia developer have languished over the past year, whereas rivals EA and Blizzard have risen 34 and 60% respectively. Longer-term performance is even worse. Since Vivendi dropped a mooted takeover in 2018, Ubisoft's market value has fallen by 5%, leaving shares valued at just over eight times forward EBITDA, including debt, uh, well below those peers' double digit multipliers. Is there just somebody? They're at stake of being taken over, it looks like. That's what it is. This is okay. It just keeps going like this, but I don't know. Yeah, okay, whatever. Something's going on with Ubisoft, but no, no, nothing apparently is like. I, mean, I can keep reading. It's all gobbledygook, though. Uh, we can talk about it on Monday if anything yeah, comes sure. to fruition on that. If by Monday Ubisoft is taking over, look forward to that conversation on Monday. But for now, we got a week coming up. Uh, that means a new week for KFGD. That means a list of hosts that are hosting the show. Uh, on Monday, next Monday, you're getting me and Tim. Tuesday, you're getting... I'm doing this off the top of the dome because I apparently didn't write it down. Tuesday, you're getting Greg and Gary Witta. Wednesday, you're getting me and Andy Cortez. Thursday... Okay. You're getting Greg and Tim, and on Friday, Greg and question marks. We're Andrea Renee. Whoa! What's I can't wait good to listen games? To that Andrea one. Renee coming through to help me out. Wow, Greg I, and Andrea back, back at it. Together. Like a bad habit. Love to see it. What was that, Kevin? What were you gonna say? I I fucked it up. That was my bad. I'm sorry. I erased it because I I didn't realize what day it is. Gotcha, 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 Tim. Uh, if you're watching this live right now on Twitch, after this is a chill afternoon stream with Mike. And in about an hour, me and Greg will be joining that stream to play some of that What the Dub. There ain't nothing chill about today's. Yeah, Mike's streaming some game after this. Then we're doing What the Dub, that new game we were talking about, PS I Love You. And then after that, we have a sponsorship. We're going to play Say No More after that. So it's oh. a big day of streaming here. Well, look forward to that. Of course, this <laughs> has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. You should never be live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. So stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, game daily. I'm hungry. <laughs>